Hey, welcome to another episode of the Inquisitive Mind of Lewis T. This is episode, what did I just say? Seven of the Inquisitive Seven. Mind of Lewis T. This is going to be great, you know. Um, so, as usual, we're going to go around. Uh, we're going to, I guess we're going to start with the man of the hour. And uh, have you, we got a Grammy-nominated producer. I'm going to let you introduce yourself. What's going on, people? I'm Nicolay. Just Nicolay, that's it? Yeah. That's it. All right, and beside Mr. Just Nicolay, we got... Uh, I go by DJ Battle. All right, and What's then happening? to my left. No, my first name is Joe, but <laughs> you can also call me Kansai. I'm from a crew called Mines One. We're, we're going to say Kansai. Okay, no, yeah. Let's stick with that. <laughs> I, and uh, I am the inquisitive mind of Lewis T. Um, so what we're going to do, for those who don't know, because it seems like he's shy... We're going to talk about uh, Mr. <laughs> Nicolay and some, some other things. Uh, this is going to be a two-parter, and we're going to get into some to meet of stuff. So, so Nicolay, like, uh, who are you? I'm, I'm yet to... Uh, I'm working on that still. <laughs> okay. Um, I am originally from a small country overseas called Holland. Uh, many Americans are familiar with this place through uh, Amsterdam. <laughs> um, I can recommend it. Wholeheartedly. <laughs> um, I came to North Carolina in, man, 06. Yes, 06 has been um, 13 years. I came to Wilmington, never thought I would stay here. Still not convinced. I didn't but, either. Like, right. Well, that's, nobody right. does. That's, yeah. It's the Bermuda Triangle. It, it, it is. I mean, really? we got uh, two other Towns. victims here, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. but it's, it's cool out here, man. Nobody bothers me, you know, other than you. Yeah. <laughs> Great. I can get my work done. No distractions. I love it. Yeah, with the internet. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter where you are. It really does. I mean, you know, the thing about it is, like, we do a fair bit of touring, and, like, I always have, like, the extra two hours. Yeah. You know, but that's pretty much it, man. I don't really... I like... I just like... Just... I'm kind of... I'm not really, like, a scene dude. You know what I mean? I really kind of stay to myself, ironically. So I don't really miss being like I was gonna when I first moved to the states I was gonna move to New York. Of course. I was gonna move to New York or L. A. and just do the whole you know scene scene networking and just and and I just um I don't know why I changed my mind but it's just like cost of living and just right it just yeah. wasn't the go you know and then I mean you had a as we haven't talked on for but most people that's watching this be familiar with a little group called Foreign Exchange. That's right. You know, so Foreign Exchange definitely had a lot of North Carolina roots. Yeah. So it makes sense that North Carolina, you know, would be kind of maybe one of those places. But um, it, it's still funny that Wilmington over like a Raleigh or, right. you know, or, or something like that. Um, I remember, speaking of Foreign Exchange, I remember the first time me and Jeff worked at, well, Jeff owned, he, I was his worker, uh, a record store called uh, Heavy Rotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the first time we like someone came in and and, and played. Was it uh, on a car, on a car off a car? Deck? That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think I was there once or twice <clears throat> yeah. before it. Yep. Yeah, when it was still cool. like once or twice. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. but I, I like um, I like I, I mean I still remember the first time just listening to Connected. Right. Oh, and man. then, but your story. Yeah. Like, that. Like me, uh, like I'll say me and one of my friends, Keith, he's been on the show a couple of times. The story sometimes is more than the music. And oh, yeah. The, the fact that it's like, you you never met this guy, right. uh, Fonte, you then another group, people yeah, I yeah, know, like my I'm brother. Right. You know, yeah. 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 Well, no, I mean, yeah. I know. And I think, I think honestly for us, like over the years, like it's, you know, I mean, success, like everybody chases success. What you don't realize is that sometimes like, it's sweeter to taste somebody else's success because they were inspired by you than your own. It's really weird. Like at first you're just really kind of chasing your own dreams and you want to, you know, do your thing. And then you realize like, wow, like Fonte calls it like it's more important how many candles you have lit than how long you burned as a candle, you know? And so I, um, over the years, like it's been this, you know, it's kind of been a little bit of a mythology around just how we did the record, but the, the core of it is true. Like we never met, 
while doing it. And we never even really talked on the phone, truth be told, because we just, it never came up. It's really stupid, but it just, right. it was literally just like a thing where it just made sense. Like, we got I Am, run it. So was it through I Am, or was is this part it was of the I Am. So it wasn't OK Player? Well, <laughs> it was through OK Player, but like, that was a forum. But once we kind of laid the foundation of like, all right, this is something we're trying to do, it was like AOL uh, Instant Messenger. Because like we were still like six hours apart, like time zone wise. And he was still working at, uh, Fonte was working at Belks. That's right. Mm -hmm. At the time. Yeah. I can say that because it's public knowledge. But yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I think that was his last, like, that was his last job. He quit, I want to say he quit like two years before me. So what um, were you doing? I was an internet help desk uh, guy, dude. Huh. Yeah, I was the internet. I would help people with their computer and their, and I'm the most impatient person in the world. So, <laughs> you can fill in the blanks like how how successful that, you know. I just I did I you know I was like a lot of guys. I had a job. I really, I really had quit doing music. Actually, like this is a true, no bullshit uh, story. Like I had played in bands all my life, you know, and just never really got to the point where it worked out financially. You know what I mean? It was just mm -hmm. like $100 here, $100 there. And I got in my late 20s and I was like, I, I'm going to have to take care of myself and just pay rent, pay yeah. bills and not be a bum. And so I kind of really gave the whole music thing, like I was just like, it's 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 a wrap. It's not happening. So I got a job at a, um, at IBM. And just supporting computers, like, on the phone with people, like, are you sure you got it plugged in and stuff? You know, that that kind of <laughs> stuff. And, I mean, it. if there's one thing that, like, really kills your soul, it's, like, <laughs> internet help that, or any sort of, like, tele. tele yeah. no, I mean, the, the, the thing we had on the telemarket <clears throat> is at least we had the stuff incoming. But, like, other than that, wow, it was a wild two years. Like, we got bomb threats and stuff. You don't believe how serious wow. people take their computers, man. Like, wow. Oh, yeah, they are like... <laughs> So it, it, it really, I just was like, I kind of had resigned to like a life of like, you know, just kind of having to work it out. And then I started making beats at night pretty much as an outlet. And that's kind of how sort of the, the flame started burning again. But for kind of a good two years, I quit. It also had to do with D'Angelo when he came out mm. with Voodoo and I was just like, yeah. So before that, it's done. Yeah. you were... You you just played the band. Before, yeah, you know. I played uh, in a lot of funk bands. Like we played a lot of like, like stuff like the time and like Zap and. Okay. Uh, so it was kind of like electronic, funk bands. I used to play bass and synthesizers, and we had. A, I mean, it was great, but it was like again, it was just like, not paying the rent, you know. So. I gotcha, and then I was just curious, like Con, you did you always produce, or were you, did you start as an MC and then start producing? So I, I grew up playing drums, so there was always like some musicality there. But um, I would say, as far as hip hop goes, I definitely started emceeing first, because you know, like when you're making beats, like the '90s, like before the advent of anything digital, yeah. like having an SP1200 or MPC accessible wasn't like not everyone had that, That's you right. know. So I would every now and again get to mess around with an SP or MPC, but like that was really you know through junior high and high school was when I was really kind of honing my craft as an MC. And then it wasn't until like I could get my hands on an MPC, like when I was actually down here in Wilmington, um, that I, I really started to take it a lot more serious. Hmm. Jeff, you play any instruments? I think I know the answer, but I'm not gonna assume. Well, um, back in middle school, I played the trombone. Hell yeah! You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, like um, I, 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 um, it was probably for about four or five years I played. Like um, I would say all the way up until my sophomore year of high school. Wow. You know what I'm saying, and then but like uh, you played in band and everything. Or yeah, what? band and uh, jazz band. Nice, both. Yeah, yep. I lived yeah, with was... this man. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so uh, I mean, how so? Produ so production got you back into the music game, right? Then um, and then and then making or just you know uh, D'Angelo everything kind of sparked that fire yeah slash yeah. like that me because I mean the thing about it is like I knew of OK like I was a Roots fan like OK Player is the Roots mm -hmm. yes. yeah it's kind of internet but I wasn't really like I was a Roots fan but I was a casual Roots fan so I didn't know about OK Player until Voodoo dropped and mm -hmm. it had like OK Player on the booklet or something and I was like what is this and 
then I realized like, okay, this website has the roots and common and like Jazzy Fat Nasties and just this whole, you know, quality, I think kind of the whole movement was on that website. And um, so first of all, I was a fan. I was just kind of interested in, I guess, interacting with fellow fans, you know what I mean? And so that's what we did. Like Fonte was on that website as a fan straight up, you know, same as I was. And so then we started seeing each other in the same sort of conversations like you know because it's like the thing about it is like we would talk about music like on the message board you know so you'd be like you know what is your favorite uh, boogie down productions album or like what is the best radio hat song it was everything in between mm-hmm. you know and um i just knew of him first from just knowing like okay this guy kind of thinks Similar than I am, but I didn't know what he was doing musically at the time. I just yeah. knew him as just as a, a peer, a dude. Music yeah, a guy, uh, and and I mean, this was internet was still new. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't young. Facebook. It That's wasn't right. like you friended each other or yeah. even followed each other. Like you, the the contacts that I had were really just like much more just like at first it was just like people that you knew by their username. Yeah, and then later if you had like more, you know, dealings with each other, you might give it. Out, you know, your I am or whatever, and then take it, take it to uh to to instant message. But like, that's just really how we started, and so kind of like when he started, I think, I think Speed was the first song that they did. Yeah, like I, right. I think Median was supposed to be on the song originally, but he was late, and then yeah, Median either... was supposed to be on a bunch of stuff. Yeah, but he yeah. yes, like that's yeah. what you said. He's um. The, yeah, Medium was like highly involved in the beginning of the Little Brother project. And I think just because of how things uh, shifted, you know, he wasn't as much involved with it at the end. But um, but he there was they only had like one or two songs. And I was like, and he showed, you know, he put it online. And I was like, yeah. this is, I'm, I mainly was dri- like dr- really, really drawn to the beat. Yeah. Um, and, and then I think they had whatever you say right after that. Yeah, and it was like that oh, was an explosion. Yeah. yeah, that was really the one that was just like, who is this? Yeah, like, what yeah. is you know? Because I mean the the I I felt the rhymes were great, but it was the beat initially that I think drew me, drew so, me in. So it was ninth. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I like me like um especially back by then, I felt like what was quote unquote underground. I was more in the commercial stuff, but I know Con Battle. Y'all were definitely big on the quote unquote underground scene. How were y'all in the like okay player and stuff back then? Like was that a thing? Um, for- I wasn't up on it. I wasn't up on that yet. But um we had known uh Ninth and Fonte and that whole Justice League crew from doing shows. Mm-hmm. So we were in the same place with them at the same time, you know, uh, you know, pretty often. Yeah. So um when uh it was like two thousand two when those songs, you know, first dropped, um, and we had just opened our, our store, so when those songs came through, like it was almost like, wait, who is that? You right, know what I'm yeah, saying? Right. It was right. like, yo, that's oh man, that's our people right there, right, man. Like yeah. that, like that was a real crazy moment for us because we were like, yo, we know these dudes. Yeah. This is crazy. And the quality yeah. was just like quality yeah, was, was just like so high. Almost, we were like, wait a minute, wait, yeah. who? And they had all those like the Justice League mixtapes. Yeah, 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 man. Like and they yeah. seemed to be like twenty of them that yeah. all you yeah. know had to say it. like to whatever. I mean. There was like five or six guys that had the same sort of skill level, you know. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. Not to not to diss some of the other guys, but you had. Well, Fontaine, I mean, even then you had did... Media, and then you had e, uh, Edgar Flo. Yeah, yeah. man, EA Flo. And you had, Sean uh, yeah, yeah, you had just Legacy. a bunch. Yeah, like yeah. just a bunch of really talented guys. So it was. Yeah, it was like it a seemed North like Carolina, a Wu-Tang Wu-Tang, sort of. Yeah, yeah right. It yeah, because like I mean, they, for every Ghostface, I mean, you still got. A you god. Not oh. saying not saying you god is bad, but <laughs> you could have just said Capadonna. <laughs> but Capadonna, he's arguably, you know, I'm talking about core members. Okay, you know? right, right, right. Like, <laughs> you know, you're kind of the Capadonna oh, of that Justice League. Okay, or, I see what. Oh wow, you know? I like that. Well, Maybe I'm the master killer. I was gonna say who's master <laughs> killer. <laughs> right. No, master killer. I'm just saying because Capadonna wasn't officially in it, but he's down with uh, the whole. Song. But I feel like Capadonna gets like. Clowned a little bit here and there, don't, don't you? Isn't he kind of like the more so? He did, yeah, like he was, uh, he was a little, he was like driving a uh, taxi for well, yeah, a while. I feel like and, people, yeah. because and his of that. album wasn't really popping, that's right. Yeah, but no, he yeah. had the, the, the black milk, black cow, the supermodel. I, I feel like that's a highly regarded, he, I feel like his first album is higher than you guys. 
I don't know. I don't know about that. Yeah, I, was I mean, say, like, what was Kappa's album, The Pillage, or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, I think, think it was. That album was good. The, yeah. it, it, I, I think it's like I think at that it just point didn't get it was the clear love. like it was it was the second generation. Like, That's right. Yeah, maybe, maybe. That's right. Yeah. And then you had like Law of the Dark Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Killer Priest. What was my man who came here? I put oh, Capadonna man. above all those people, and we're getting way off subject. I know, but <laughs> but Cap, I, I I did not mean that as disrespect. I put Capadonna. I only said that because he's like the tenth member of Woo, but then some people say he's not like official Woo. Right. But he right. was, like, you know, what I mean, so he's a precursor, not in the quality. But I do feel like people do clown him because of the taxi cab thing. Well, it's <laughs> funny you bring this up because we just had a uh, like the Beats and Coffee event, mm -hmm. and they did a hip hop quiz, and the last question was who's. I mean, it was extremely subjective. It was like questions were like what's what should be louder, bass kicks or snares, and right. like, like okay, that's uh, like, that's a <laughs> question of taste. But then it was the last question was who's the worst member of Wu Tang. And I'm outside, and I'm like adamant that like I like Master Killer more than I like you got. I think you got is yeah. like the low man on the totem pole. Cap is just like again, he's not actually in the uh, the crew. And I'm outside of satellite, and they announce it, and they, they said the right answer was you got. And I was like, nah, hold <laughs> up. It like ran through. I was like, it's Master Killer, so I'm like whatever. You know? But um, yeah, 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 that's a it's a it's a controversial thing. Yeah. Serious. Yeah. Did I don't know if I asked you this yet. Did you were you big on the OK Player thing? So I was familiar with that. So, you know, I've been a bum for like a good portion of my life. So like I didn't have a computer. I didn't have access to the internet. So I never yeah, was, yeah. Right. So I was Until not I on. heavy rotation. Oh. Yeah. But then I remember, what was it, like maybe the Spit Kicker tour? I remember seeing like that tour with Common, mm. um, with Quali. Yeah, um, um, Skills was on that, right? Yes. Maybe, yeah, yeah. Like he was I like, oh, yeah. Movie. And yeah. I saw them at 930 Club. So then I, you know, and I was familiar with all of them separately and like Raucous Records and everything. Right. And then I, st and I always liked The Roots. And then I was like, well, what does OK Player have to do with The Roots? And then I remember the forums on the website. Mm. Um, so yeah, I was vaguely familiar. But what, what year did the listening come out? Like, Oh, uh, that's, that's oh, like 2003. Two. Three yeah, is when yeah. it like came out for yeah, real. Yeah. Like it sort of had the yeah. the, the local the, the soft of, release. Yeah. Like was I think yeah. at the end of 02. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah. tell people that all the time. Like I just moved from DC to go to school down. I mean like 01, but like I was still yeah. getting acclimated. And so my friends were like, oh, "What is it? like? What's a little brother? What is this?" Yeah. And I had it. And you know I was big on it, but it definitely was like a shift. You know, like if you're coming out of the 90s, like and wanting ultra aggressive stuff, and the beats were like you're. Rizza fan, like yeah. ninth isn't gonna be that digestible, but for me it was like like getting acclimated to North Carolina. I was like, this is the sound of North Carolina. Yeah, yeah. I felt the same brother. way without ever like having been here yet at the time. I was like, this has got to be what North Carolina sounds like, yeah. you know, just because of. And I mean, it it really isn't per se. I found out later, but well, it, or it, it, it's more diverse. than just that. Yeah, yeah. we're we're diverse because we have a yeah. lot of influence. Uh, you got a lot of family. Members that settle here from like New York, right? So you get that kind of stuff, but right. then you got people that's maybe either from further south or just broke, grew up here. So you get more of the P. D. Pablo or right. like what would be the baby now? Well, yeah, well, you know? like we have so many, so many schools here, so many colleges, yes, yeah, and people come from all over the country, all mm -hmm. over the world, yeah, you know, it's to go to all pot. the colleges. So I mean, uh, that's why the sound is so all over the place because you got people from all over the place. Right. Yeah. yeah. So what I was trying to lead to. Um, with the lead, enough with OK Player, one of my favorite Nicolay songs, and I think y'all want a contest, but is the Williams. Mm -hmm. So you oh, tell man. me, tell me, tell me like how that came to be. Well, this so uh, Questlove had the idea he was going to do OK Player Records because he wanted to sort of you know it was like at that point. So now we're two three years down the road. Um, so this is like well. This after. is more like so. This is at the time like Fonte and I have done have finished the album but it's not come out yet but okay. we kind of have it on the shelf or whatever and so I'm kind of more putting stuff out around and um, Superstition was one of those guys same as like most everybody else like when I when Nick's Groove came out or the Lighted Up stuff like Cats came out of the woodwork like yeah. and so Superstition was one of the guys like early he hit me up he's like yo this is really cool like and so him and I did five or six tracks and the Williams was going to be on his album first and um and then Questlove said like okay like we're doing this thing where we want to start okay player records and like I, I mean they had like eight slots out of ten were just given away to the homies you know what I'm saying so it was yeah. like skills and little brother but then they had two slots and they were like doing a little contest for 
Mm. And you could just submit. It was just people on the on the on the website submitting, and we, I submitted. I don't think Superstition knew about it because again, he wanted it for his his album. But I was like, well, this is a really good track, so I submitted it, and then we won, and then Super had to take it off his album. But he got. Other but there's stuff. a remix. There's a remix too. There is a remix. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but um, so now that was um, and then me and Super did some stuff for his album. So it was mm. just after I met. Or after I got in touch with Tay, it was like superstition. It was guys from the league. It was, mm -hmm. it was left and right. You know, it was kind of like a, you know, I think I think the word traveled really fast. You know, so everybody wanted to to jump on something at the time. And we, would you say because we were just talking about how the sound of North Carolina? Do you feel like you gravitated to Carolina artists because you were just in that kind of that vibe? Or I think it's just I think I think if I look about it like. I think it's more of a coincidence than that, I think. Mm -hmm. But I do feel... So I got I, there is a story that is it's like... It's maybe two minutes long, so I'll, I'll make it... I'll be very short, but... As a kid, I used to like doing uh, jigsaw <clears throat> puzzles. Like, really got into that. The, the harder, the better. More pieces, the better. And one of my favorites was this mansion. It was just a photo of a mansion. And um, so I'm like seven, eight years old... And the box said, like, North Carolina. Like, the mm -hmm. box said, North Carolina. It was this big old, clearly like a plantation mansion. I didn't know at the time. I was seven years old. But, like, mansion. And I loved doing that puzzle because it was really difficult. And so I am I move here. This is, like, 07 or something. I've been here for a while. And I, you know, I, I don't know where I saw it. I think it was my wife, Amy. She had gotten some tourist brochures for my sister was coming to town or whatever and i'm like that's the mansion right there one of those photos it's like that's the goddamn mansion from the uh from the puzzle and it turns out like that that was orton plantation i'd done a puzzle of orton plantation since i was like seven eight years old not knowing you know that it wasn't outside of wilmington and stuff and so i kind of do look at that as like a a sort of destiny kind of thing that like I do think there's something that binds me here but it is not I didn't set out like you know it just Fonte happened to be the guy that I was just like I guess um, just talent wise I think he just really appealed to me uh, more than some other well, people Fonte I don't know why is, you know I mean he's definitely and I know from your Facebook post you feel the same way I feel like he's definitely underrated and kind of where his stature is as far as emceeing. You know, I, I mean, I think he's, he's, he's the rapper, rapper. but he's, he's under, I think, I think the funny thing is like, in a way he's kind of right where he should be. Yeah. Um, I, I'd like to see him be more appreciated in, within the genre, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, like, but he is not uncomfortable being where he is, you know what I mean? Because he's got sort of like this really cool position where he can do the rap stuff, he can do the foreign exchange stuff, he can do all this TV stuff that he's trying to do, you know. So, but it, but just strictly on a skill level, mm -hmm. I do think like he's one of the better artists that I think his generation has produced. You know, sort of the mm -hmm. the the, the early aughts, you know. Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, like, he's, he's influenced. I feel, I feel like one of the biggest artists out there. You know, like Drake, or like, right. So, yeah, know. I think, I think, and that's the thing when you, when you think about, he should be maybe he's underrated. You know what? Maybe he's just one of those. Like, think about Chuggy Otis. Like, think about when Chuggy Otis was making records in the '60s. Everybody was like. Sly Stone is cool, but like Shogi Otis, like Shogi Otis. Yeah. And right now, like I'm willing to bet, like nine out of ten people have no idea who Shogi Otis is. But like he, you know, every now and then you have these guys that, again, they light more candles than maybe they burn themselves. And I think he is just lit like a shit ton of candles. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like not just Drake, who's kind of like the obvious example, but at the same time. Not a great example because of just how his career kind of took shape, but but guys like J. Cole, um, closer to home, that that literally watched like a lot of these guys, you know, kind of get into the game and and just learning from them, you know, and it's 
is that I think again, I think there's a lot of people that learn directly from what Fonte has done over the last ten years. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You know. Yeah. So, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna ask. So I'm gonna ask this question in to you, but then I'm gonna like flip it to Khan and, and battle to see um see who. So pretty much, is this someone that uh, you haven't worked with that you want to work with? Like is it like who's still left on your bucket list list? And I'm gonna ask them to, if there's anyone that they would like to see paired or even paired again with you. So I'll start that first and let them think. So is there someone on yeah. your bucket list uh, that you? Yeah, want to I mean work? my bu- I mean I haven't really worked with a lot of people. Like that's the irony. Like I think. I, I think straight up people are afraid to mess with us sometimes because they know that we don't fuck around, you know, so we don't really, there's just a, you know, an intimidation that comes from just people seeing us do the things we, we are so, I mean, we've done this now for 10 years and this is all we do. So we're kind of really finely tuned and some people are a little bit like intimidated by that, you know, so... I don't know. I'd I'd love to work with um, with people that I mean I'm I'm I've always been a really big fan of Layla Hathaway for instance. Like her and I are, are good friends. She's won like fucking hundred Grammys at this point. So I don't know. You know that's just where that is gonna be a thing. But that would be one of my I think direct sort of sort of people. Um, I really. I really don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like if I say all these names now, it's going to kind of almost like, there's so many people who whose names I don't even know. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. that might be incredibly talented. I don't even know about. So I'm just kind of, I'm wide open. Like, just hit me up. Like, that's really all that it is. And I don't really care if you're, if you have five, Facebook friends or 10,000, you know, if you're not. I think it's more about the Instagram than now that oh, is it? Than, the, than the Facebook. <laughs> I don't know, they move, they too old for that, man. Yeah. I'm too, I'm too, I, I do the Instagram, yeah. but I have to ask people, like, how do I, like, my drummer is like, he's just kind of like the social media addict slash wizard. Like, <laughs> like, and I have to always ask him, like, how do I add this to my story, man? He's like, you know, but it's like I, yeah, I'm more kind of like Twitter was my real speed because it doesn't really give you a lot. It's yeah. just that's what it is. But then I got sucked into Facebook and it's it's a lot. It's, it's a, a lot. lot. I yeah. can't get out. Yeah, yeah, I can't get out. I don't know. It's yeah. I sp- I waste a little bit of time on there. Every now and then. Yeah. yeah, it's good. It's a yeah. good release. So is there like is there someone? Either one of y'all like would love to hear like over a Nicolay track or I mean like m- like my first thought was uh, Jill Scott. Yeah, I think that would be such I got an amazing really close combination with Jill. And, yeah, um, but it's again it's like like Jill would be a really good example. Yeah, but I think a lot of those artists they they're they're very cautious mm-hmm. not to not to really kind of thread on territory that might be. Expert. Risky, you know. Right, what I mean? Yeah. Like when you're Jill Scott, you just have to. Yeah. And in her opinion, I would love to have a Jill Scott album, especially now after she's been in the game for. Right. Right. Like shit, twenty years. Yeah. Like yeah. let's face it. Yeah, like ninety. Yeah. Ninety seven. Ninety eight. Yeah, she was right. all like with that spit kick. And I think right. now yeah. she could do a record that is just going. Absolutely. Way out. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. So I'd I'd love to, but a lot of those guys they don't take, ch- like when Risk. you're on a label, man, like. Yeah. People are telling you like, yo, you don't want to work with Nicolay because he's, got, you know, you want to work with, right? Yeah, whoever like, is the hot, the, yeah, like the hot know? new name that's you know that, out there. You know, so that's yeah. the thing about us. We don't, we're not beholden to anybody. It's yeah. just like you know, and so that doesn't always. We have some label friction sometimes with people, and we've had a couple of times where we had to give people like, literally like nicknames, like in order to be yeah. on the record because label we tell them like can't do it. You know, like my my second thought is just like hip hop in general. Like um, I was such a fan of your hip hop production. Yeah. And uh, like you kind of moved away, you know, from that a few years ago. Um, is there anybody like hip hop wise who you ever, you know, thought of like, like that would bring me back to hip hop if I, you know, had a situation with that person? Is there any like rapper? The funny thing yeah. is like the the the, the irony is that the one person that would be that would be Fonte but we're right. already kind of that's right in the, uh, so it's just yeah it, it really um I 
I still enjoy listening to hip hop. Yeah. You know, um, I must admit that like a lot of guys of my age, like I've completely lost any and all connection with a lot of stuff that's coming out currently. Yeah. Um, just because, and, and I'm not, I don't complain about that. I'm not like, oh, music is trash. I just know that I've now become my dad. You right. Know what I mean? so no, I understand. Like, all right, I, I totally is. understand. Yeah. And they are now listening to stuff that is different than I like to listen to. And I, I don't have a problem with it. Right, right. You know, but it is not, it is not necessarily for me. You know what I mean? So when I, I do find that when I listen to hip hop, other than like, obviously I'll check out the new Royce record when it comes out. Right. I like guys like that, that are, you know, yeah. but like overall, I've, it, it, it's been hard for me to kind of keep up with like what happens. Yeah. Yeah. With for the sure. all Takashi's and all that shit. Over <laughs> I just can't, I just, to me, it's so far yeah. removed, removed from that. I'd rather not, you know, I don't know. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. So what about you, Khan? I don't know. I mean, for, Initially, I started thinking about hip hop, and I started thinking like someone like Odyssey or someone like that. Um, but they were involved in. They were. What, I was gonna that, say, wasn't they, that campaign? They were all connected, right? They were all connected. I was yeah. gonna say but like those, those worlds before. probably kind of collided. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, yeah. He's a great Odyssey and Black Milk. I think as sort oh, of man. the two kind of yeah. independent like powerhouses. Those guys are touring their asses off. You know yeah. what I'm saying? They really created their own. Lay inside of kind of without outside of the industry, if you will. Yeah. Like Odyssey yeah. is a incredible beat maker too, yeah. and um, yeah. and a good good dude, man. Yeah. Like I would, I would definitely Odyssey is definitely somebody that I could. But again, he's he's so good production wise himself. He doesn't yeah. need me. <laughs> yeah, he's got it. He's got it down. You think yeah. it like. Like Bilal or someone like that, you oh, know, man. maybe someone. I don't know if you've already worked with Bilal or like, like. I've never worked with Bilal. I'd always. That's a good. That's. A, I've always wanted to work with with Bilal, and I. Um, I think we would sound good together. Yeah. I think like, but I would want to work with the with the all matter Bilal, like the, the the crazy out there Bilal, not yeah. like the, first album Dr. Dre Bilal. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I would mm -hmm. really. I really, but it, I mean, he kind of moved away from that. Like he's, he's, yeah, he's a, he's, I think another incredible artist, a big fan of, big fan. Is he still, is he still making music now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 He's still, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. I was going to say like, I, you know, just Odyssey and like Kev Brown and all of them, you know, my DC peoples. And I know Bilal is like heavily connected with a lot of, I feel like the Philly folks, New That's York right. folks, but a lot of DC people. So I know Kev has done some stuff with Bilal. Um, yeah, and you find him popping. I still find him popping up on like we want to call it underground, but just lesser heard hip hop from time to time. I'm like, oh, okay, I forgot yeah. about Bilal. But, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I get and to me personally, um, one just because being your Facebook friend and knowing how much of a uh, big fan you are, of Prince. Yeah, uh, and I and I and I'm a big fan of her. I was Janae. Janelle Monet. Yeah, I would love that. I would like to see that. For that would be interesting. Like a that would be, would be interesting. Yeah. I mean, I can, I gotta say, like I'm 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 a fan of hers. I'm not always into the. Um, I'm not always into all of the visuals when it comes to her. Like she she's real. Now I think that's what makes her great, but it doesn't always work for me. But she's an incredible talent. Hard worker too. Yeah, yeah. yeah really, yeah. really, really hard worker. And I feel like y'all, because I feel like which I'm gonna lead into after this, but her business aspect of like her, her, like you know, doing um, killing it. You know, like what what she's doing, putting other people on in a position. Yeah, I think maybe in business mind, y'all y'all would be a good collaboration. Yeah, you know what I mean. I would certainly yeah. like to try just because I do have my. I guess reservations about some of her music sometimes. Yeah, that I I I would love to get that opportunity but again that that would really have to be that would you know that could go two ways you know what i mean again i'd yeah. I'd, I'd be open to it yeah and then hip-hop um i was i always like putting my carolina people together i would uh the nicola j cole track would be i think, I think that'd be dope. yeah yeah, yeah. So, matter of fact a nicola j cole track featuring fonte that would be go. rapping fonte yeah yeah mm -hmm. i don't know that j cole wants that I might do a I mean, hook Fonte. Right. right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you would want be good. it. I mean, if you, I, I'm talking about what I, I no, want. No, 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 no. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. But yeah, I'm just yeah. saying, like, you got to be careful with what you wish for there. Yeah. But, like, yeah. I think, but yeah, I, I, I got a lot of respect for J. Cole, mainly because, like, for his youth, 
he was very, 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 very sophisticated and knowledgeable in the moves that he made. And he um, is an incredibly astute and smart business guy. Mm -hmm. Made some killer deals in his publishing and stuff, you know. Like, a lot of people don't know about that, but, like, he is... Uh, very smart. He did a lot of his own production too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think he he does most of it now. Yeah. Which yeah. It's a hundred percent right there. Yeah. Like I wish yeah. I wish I would love, and I, I think you were just talking about this with Jill Scott, and just other people. I don't know why people. I would love to one. I would love to hear J, J Cole on non J Cole beats. Just one. You know. Just which I think we might be getting that with that uh, collaboration album he's got. Oh, okay. But I feel like a lot of people never. I don't know if, it, and I don't know why people never give you that the the baby that you want. Like you think once you get like once, like Jay Z. I feel like Jay Z four 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 might be the closest thing to what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But how you saying how like Jill Scott doesn't want to be um, experiment experimental, yeah. Yeah, experimental yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. or whatever, or even like Eminem, like that bullshit that he just gave us. <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like Eminem and a lot of these people, you would think they're in their career. Where they can do the ha the album that they want to do, they don't have to do what a label dictates to them. Right. Like Eminem could could have gave us a hip hop album with Redman and some hard hitting beats. Like J Cole, he's still in there, so I could see him. But I I don't but I uh, I don't see why he couldn't give us an album with other beats. Um, and yeah. I forget. I where mean, I'm kind I, of but you got to not you got to think like once you've done it like a couple of times, like yeah, you don't want to divide that money. Like for him, like you got to imagine if you've been that successful, like. What do you still have to prove? You know, right. so I think I think. But who, what what? I mean, I guess he's a little bit closer to Joe's age and in hours. But what what kid don't want to rap? On, what hip hop kid don't want to rap on a primo beat or a knife beat or a Nicolay beat? Like what hip hop head doesn't want that? Like the, usually those things come because of status or money. He don't have to worry about money. He doesn't have to worry about cutting you a check. He, right. he, he got it. Right. He don't have to worry about, you know, you, I, I'm sure you would be willing. I'm sure Knife would be willing. I'm sure work with Eminem? Primo. Any of them. Knife, yeah. I mean, Eminem, right. J. Cole, J. Cole or whoever. Know, any man. of those people. I don't know. Maybe. No. I don't know. I, I wouldn't jump at the opportunity. Personally. Uh, either one, J. Cole or Eminem? Oh, no, no, I'm just talking about M now. No, I've, I've worked with J. Cole. So, yeah. I'm, I'm sure you would have been more I'm likely... I'm just not a big Eminem fan, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. Just, just straight yeah. up, I mean, it's not really... Yeah, I mean, well, I... I, no. I yeah. He's had moments for yeah. me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, well, done, yeah. I mean, he's really had moments for me. Yeah, yeah, he's in the yeah. encyclopedia, like, under ease, like Eminem. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, all so, the props in the world, but, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know... After twenty again, he's another guy that has been around for a while, and it's just like I feel like Eminem is truly a one-trick pony. Like mm. with all the skills that he has, it's like the setting is always like I'm angry, and I'm you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I would have loved for Eminem to maybe have more material that is like okay, now I'm maybe a little bit more chill because I've got right. fucking that's kind of what I'm talking you know? about. And it's yeah. like he yeah, doesn't yeah. ever is always, and I mean I think again once you're in that label machine you know they want you to do the rihanna hooks and stuff like that's yeah just, I mean, it's, it's otherwise hard. don't come to the label this is like you know, right yeah like that's what you're sense. signing up right. for it's like yeah. it makes yeah. sense that you want to still keep putting out hits because you want to chase yeah i hit, mean there's definitely know? more examples of people sticking it with work i mean right i mean i think we're all familiar with uh Akineli before put it in your mouth and then after or sir mix a lot before baby got back yeah. and then after like both of those people were arguably rappers oh no, yeah know, we're definitely rappers then, you yeah. know what i mean like yeah for sure and then, and then but that's not what that got them on so something caught for them and they stuck to it so with eminem being that kind of crazy rapper that worked for him so you're like that but that's kind of my point i could see sir mix a lot being scared to go back to my posse's on broadway Cause, but Eminem is so established, or even J. Cole, or whoever, when you get to a point that yeah, just, you, you feel like you can do what you want to do. You yeah, know, he probably You know what I mean? Like, maybe but, he's but, doing what he wants to. I mean, who, but, who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe he just has terrible taste in right. beats. Like, that he does. Yeah. I mean, that, there's I that. Mean, I, I, I just want, like, it's there's not that. to get too far in the beat conversation yet. <laughs> nah, but this, that's got, that has to be said. Like, yeah. I mean, no, for it's, sure. it's really just the awkward highs and stuff. It's like, yeah. come on, dude. Like, yeah. And I mean, it when it worked, again, it worked. You know what I mean? Yeah. He had, like, a couple of moments, like, 
you know, when it really, really worked. But then it's just like after that. Yeah. And and God, he man. man, like he's still selling out stadiums. Yeah, yeah. You course. know, so there's yeah, that. He's a popular yeah. artist. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I saw I saw him I yeah. saw him once live with um B twelve. So this was yeah, but no, no, no. It was uh Roy? fifty cent was on the bill. Oh. Mm. I think it was the circus thing, whatever the setup uh, was, whatever uh yeah. and it was good. Green, like, when Green Lantern was a DJ? Yeah, yep, yep. Yeah. And it was uh G Unit and uh everything and it was kind of it was good. Band. What, no, what nah, band? it wasn't a band. No band. It was just straight, um, like straight ahead rapping. It had um, exhibit was on the bill. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Yeah, it was kind of like stuff yeah. like that. It was like some. That's interesting. It was a good show, but it was again like it's just like hour and a half of just real, just a lot of angst, man. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of angst. <laughs> so my, my my last thing, uh, like I guess topic I want to kind of touch on. Um, tell me more about like foreign exchange, the the record label, like. How is it being an independent, like, executive, like, uh, and like, you know, kind of what what projects y'all y'all have, who like who's on the label now, like, just the whole in 2019 running a record label, right? You know, that's it's a whole... terrible idea, like, yeah. terrible, like, <laughs> terrible, like, well, I mean, for us, it may it still makes sense, but like, stuff is shifting so rapidly that um, that you can't. You can't really look at it even as a business anymore because like you're going to be disappointed, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like like a lot of artists now after kind of the independent thing became like fashionable, everybody is like okay, I can do everything myself. I can post on Facebook and stuff and then they find out like shit is not happening, you know, because everybody's doing that. You know, so it's it's the social media thing is officially played out. Like that no longer gets you any sort of visibility, in my personal opinion. Um, Instagram is kind of still where it's at. Um, Snapchat is, is, I think, already on the way out. But Facebook has, has tightened down those algorithms so much that you can't, unless you pay to play, like you really don't get in front of people anymore. So for us, the only way that it has made sense is to always do our own records and not really branch out too much outside of that. So you'll find, you know, obviously we did Fonte's record last year, which for us was a big smash um, because, again, we're doing it ourselves, you know. So every every cent that comes back, you know, is 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 it, it comes back to us. But um, but it it it's incredibly difficult right now. I'd say it's the hardest right now than it's been since I started making music, just in terms of the the landscape, like straight up the, the circumstances. It's, it's, it's really, really difficult, you know, and, and streaming of course is a thing that is kind of on the rise right now, but it doesn't really make up for the losses that, that we've all had in terms of download. Like, uh, you know, downloads is already over. Like that's no longer a thing. That's right. People Mm -hmm. are already no longer really paying for files anymore, which I totally understand, you know, but, um, so physical is done, downloads is done, you know, so you got to really figure out like how, how am I releasing music? Am I still doing albums? You know, am I maybe doing a couple of EPs or maybe some singles? Yeah. Um, everything is right now is, is really shifting, man. So it's, um, it's, it's a, it's a challenge. The, the thing that makes it work for us is like, we have a core base at this point that, follows what we do you know but uh, like if we were to come up now if we just did connect it like last week like that shit would nobody would know about that like mm-hmm. it's not i don't know how you know what i mean it's really that difficult currently it's real. like a lot of young artists will ask me like what you know how to approach yeah you know how to get started it's like i have no fucking <laughs> yeah. i really don't and it's i feel such a lame ass when i and this, like, you see these people just like, that's all he had. Like, right, yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, Nicolai, I don't know. That's all he had. But it's like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it really, I mean, uh, outside of just doing great music, but that's kind of obvious, right? Right, yeah. yeah. It's like, I Be don't good. Really, well, no, I don't know how obvious that is. Well, <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> but, I, tell you, I don't right. think it's that obvious. 
But I was like, I, I liken it to uh, that show Hotel Impossible. Do y'all know that show? It's like this guy goes into these terrible hotels. I, I have seen this, yeah. <laughs> and like nine out of ten times, it's really not a complex issue. It's just the shit be filthy, you know what I mean? Right. It's just nasty. <laughs> and it's really not that like science kind of deal. It's just like you just need to clean your shit up. Yeah. And that's what music too is like. Nine times, uh, it's not really this this big sort of complex. Like you just need to get better music, dog. Like you just need to do better stuff, you know. And yeah. I don't know. All right, I'm so a little critical. <laughs> yeah, as I, you I know. know. Yeah. So uh, let's go ahead uh, wrap up uh, uh, part one of this. Let's go around. Uh, Nick, give you like social medias, where the people can find you. If you All got right. anything that you want them to check out. Uh, definitely actually my Facebook probably, I don't know my Facebook I, that that's maybe more like a sort of like a advanced level let's just go with Twitter Nicolay Music mm-hmm. and then if you if you can hang with that then you can move into the Facebook and then you find out what <laughs> I talk about on Facebook and you got like websites and stuff too yeah foreignexchangemusic.com definitely go to that Amy, Amy I got your back Amy <laughs> yeah just do it the little just put the little letters on yeah. the screen <laughs> yeah We'll yeah. edit that. Yeah, we'll edit. Yeah, we'll, that's gonna we'll definitely edit get that in. Yeah. We'll edit the URL in. <laughs> Jeff, where where people? Where, uh, where my people social find? media is uh, DJ Battle NC, as in North Carolina, and that's the same on uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, MySpace, uh, Black Planet, everything else. <laughs> Black Planet. Uh, hey. Year is coming back. It's coming back. It's yeah, coming yeah. Back. <laughs> I used to have a Black Planet account. <laughs> <laughs> Ironic or not? That's that's swear. Right, man. Hey, Kansai. Oh yeah, <clears throat> everything is a uh, Kansai. Mine's one. Spell um, that for people. K O N space S C I space M I N D S O N E, and that's where you can find just stuff pertaining to me as far as like my you know production credits and things like that and thoughts that I release periodically. Um, and then Mine's One, uh, you can go to, like Bandcamp. Mine's One Music. Um, we're Still, that's a whole nother discussion. Sort of affiliated with Ill Adrenaline Records, so you can you can find some of our stuff through them and, and Fat Beats. But um, Minds One Music is the uh, Instagram and, and Facebook. And uh, me, you can find the Instagram I M O L T podcast. Um, Inquisitive Mount of Louis T. Facebook. Make sure you, if you're watching this on Facebook. Make sure you go to the YouTube page. Just search I M O L T on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe. Inquisitive Mind of Lewis T. Make sure you check out part two. We got a part two um, coming up. So it'll be out in a week, two weeks. You know, that's why you got to hit subscribe, find it. Um, and we're going to still, we got these same guys. And uh, thank, thank everybody. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff.